Today we'll be doing a quick fire video of some of the most useful tips and commands on Juniper. There is a difference between configuration mode and operational mode. Operational mode is where you run operational commands and configuration mode is where, you guessed it, you do your configuration. If you are not sure in which mode you are, have a look at the symbol just after your device's hostname. The greater than sign means you're in operational mode and the hash sign means you're in config mode. When you log into the device with user root, you will automatically be at a shell level. To enter CLI, you need to type CLI and press enter. This will put you in operational mode. To enter config mode, type either configure, edit or configure private. When you log in as any other user, you will automatically be in operational mode and you don't have to type in CLI. You can run operational commands from config mode by entering run before the command. You can't run configuration commands from operational mode. Once you're in config mode, you will notice that you can make changes to the device config, but it won't be applied until you commit. This is because Juno's devices have a running config and a candidate config. When you make changes to the config, you are creating what we call a candidate configuration. Once you commit the config, the candidate config is then saved as the running config. If there's more than one person applying config to a specific device, all users currently making changes will need to use configure private. When you commit the config from your configure private, only the portion that you configured is applied. This prevents you from accidentally applying someone else's config and potentially create unwanted behavior. When you commit the config, there are a few safeguards to prevent you from having to drive to the data center to restore the previous working config. The first one is commit check. This will check all your config to see if it can be applied without errors. This doesn't mean that your changes won't affect your access to the device, but it will check whether the config you have applied is valid. Next, you can do a show pipe compare to manually review all your changes and to double check that all your parameters are set correctly. Next, you'll do a commit confirmed followed by a time limit. If you type in commit confirmed to, for example, the config will be applied, but if you don't follow the initial commit confirmed with a commit, the config will be rolled back to its previous state within two minutes. This is great to use if you need to remotely configure something and run the risk of losing connectivity. If you made changes to the candidate configuration, but you don't want to apply it, you can do a rollback zero. This will erase all changes you have made to the candidate configuration. A rollback can also be used to roll back the config to a previous state. If you have made multiple changes and commits and something is not working as expected, you can do a rollback question mark to find the last running config before you start making the changes. If you identify the rollback number as five, then you can do a rollback five commit and your device will revert back to the config you identified in the rollback command. When you are typing commands on Juniper, you can press tab or space to autocomplete certain terms. It makes it a lot easier than to type out the full word each time. Tab will autocomplete any predefined as well as user-defined terms while space will complete only predefined terms. Please take note of where each command is run from in the next section. If you want to see which interfaces on your device are up or down and whether they have IP addresses configured on them, you can do a show interfaces terse. If you have interface descriptions set in your config, then identifying interfaces are made a lot easier by running the show interfaces descriptions command. If you want to load a full config file, there are two ways this can be achieved, and this depends on what format your config file is in. If your config file contains all set commands, you can do a load set relative terminal from config mode, paste the config, press enter, and press control D once all config lines have been copied across. This will show you if there are any syntax errors with the config you just applied. If your config file is in XML format, you will need to use the load merge relative terminal command. You will also need to press enter and control D once done. To view your config in the set command format, you can type in show pipe display set from config mode. To view your config in XML format, you can do a show from config mode. If you are looking for a specific line of config, you can use the show pipe display set pipe match command. For example, if I do a show pipe display set pipe match system, it will show me all set commands that contain the term system. If you want to see which interface a MAC address is learnt on, you can do a show ethernet switching table. This is device dependent and works only on most switches. On routers, you need to create bridge domains for layer two services and the command to view the MAC addresses would be show bridge MAC table. You can also view ARP entries on routers, switches and firewalls by issuing the show ARP command. To avoid any delays in name lookups when issuing this command, use the no resolve statement. 
Remember, ARP entries will only show up for networks that the local device has a Layer 3 interface for, and also only if there was recent communication to the device. ARP entries have a timeout value, and if no comms to said device occurs after the timer has expired, the ARP entry will not be installed in the ARP table. There is a difference between a MAC table and an ARP table, though they might look similar. An ARP table will show you which MAC address belongs to a certain IP address. The MAC table will show you on which interface the MAC address is learned. To find out what your active route is to a certain destination, nation do a show route and the route with an asterisk or start next to it indicates that that is the active route being used for traffic towards that destination if you want to halt your device you can run request system halt this will gracefully shut down the device's operating system, making it safe for you to unplug the power. Be careful though, as when this command is entered and you are connected via console, you can accidentally restart the device by pressing a key on your keyboard. If you unplug the power from your device while it is starting up, you run the risk of the storage or operating system becoming corrupt. To reboot your device, you can run request system reboot. You can also specify a time in minutes, so if you issue the command request system reboot in 10, the system will reboot in 10 minutes. If you run a request system reboot at 1300, the system will reboot at 1 p.m. based on its internal clock. Some devices support the request system power off command where the system will completely shut down after it has run through this process. This command can be issued on any Genius device, but some devices will only go into a halt state while others will completely power off. To see the current time as well as uptime on your device, you can do a show system uptime. To see routing engine resource usage, you can do a show chassis routing engine. To get your device serial number and also to see what hardware is installed, you can do a show chassis hardware. To verify that your system is running within its operating temperatures, whether the fans are running correctly, etc., you can issue the show chassis environment command. To see how much bandwidth is utilized on a certain interface, you can run the monitor interface xe-0 slash 0 slash 0 command, for example. To check whether traffic is hitting a certain interface on your device, you can do a monitor traffic interface xe-0 slash 0 slash 0. Slash 0. This will do a TCP dump on the interface specified. Please note that this is not a packet capture and will only show you traffic destined for that interface. This is useful to see whether OSPF packets are reaching the interface as an example. To check the status of your ISIS neighbors, do a show ISIS adjacency. To check the general status of your BGP neighbors, do a show BGP summary. To verify that your OSPF neighbors have come up, do a show OSPF neighbor. The same can be done for LDP and MPLS by running show LDP session. The up and down arrow keys are some of the most useful keys on your keyboard as it will cycle through previously typed commands. If you make a mistake with the command you are currently typing, you can use Ctrl and W to delete whole terms instead of pressing backspace repeatedly. And lastly, if you want to see a general log file of your system, it has to be configured under system syslog. Once the config is present, you can do a show log messages to get a lot of information about what is happening on the box. There are a lot of different log files that are created by default, and this will be covered in a future troubleshooting video. And that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope these uh, tips and tricks help you. If they do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, we hope to see you guys on the next one.